I've been doing lots of videos lately on the stuff I've been doing with my cars. Uh, that's not the only thing I've been working on. So I've been making a, the best use of all this lockdown time and not having to travel to work. And um, I'm actually dropping down to three days a week of work just to, to help my company out a little bit when, when there's, there's not a lot of work around. So I've got a lot more time for all my projects, which is really cool. Um, I am still progressing on the 3D printed Enigma machine. It's, it's just very slow, but I am making progress. Um, I think last time I mentioned I was getting these printed circuit boards made. That's these. And these are just really to help with wiring the machine up and assembling it. So there's no actual circuitry involved. This is just to make the wiring easier. Um, and you can see I've already gone and made one up, which is the, the printed circuit board that the lamp board uses. And you can see how I've got all these header pins, which the wires are connected to. I've just got a, a little battery pack set up here, just so you can see what these look like when they're, when they're lit up. Um, light up another one. The... One of the reasons I used actual lamps in this rather than LEDs is one, it's it's like a real machine. The real machine uses lamps, not modern semiconductors. And two, I just prefer the way lamps light up. You you can see, especially these ones, because they're being underdriven by a lot. I think they're twelve volt bulbs. They're they're panel bulbs. Um, and you can see by by underdriving them, one, they're gonna last forever. And two, they, the way they light up, they sort of fade in and out, um, which I really like. And it's a lot more mechanical looking, if that makes sense, rather than electronic. Um, because this isn't electronic at all. It's completely electromechanical. So that's what the, the circuit boards are going to help me do. Um, like I said, I've done the lamp board. That's come out really well. This was the board I designed for the, the plug board. So this is the, the plug board here. Obviously, I, I'm going to have a ton of wires coming off these sockets. Um, the plug board will sit up above this. I've actually decided to... I was originally going to have wires from each of the sockets being soldered directly into these pads on the board. I've decided to change that. I've got, I'm getting a new board made where um, the, the plug board will have flying leads and it'll have a whole bunch of these little um, DuPont... JST type connectors, Molex type connectors. I'm not sure exactly what these ones are called. Um, I think the original DuPont style ones you don't really see very often these days. Um, but I'm not sure exactly what these are, but they're, they're very common. One thing I, I have had to do is realizing I'm going to have to make up all this cabling. One, I've ordered a whole lot of silicone wire because it's very thin and it's very flexible. And obviously I have to pack a ton of wires into a very small space with this. And the other thing I've ordered is a proper crimp tool to actually be able to crimp um, the, little, the little crimps that these use. Because trying to do it with the cheap crappy tools is just, just really awkward. The, the proper tools to do it, so the, the tools made by companies such as Molex are ridiculously expensive. And... We're talking 600 New Zealand dollars, I think, for a pair of crimping plies. And I've only ever seen one set, which is a set that my friend Roddy owns, um, which we used when I was working up at Weta. And they were really, really good because they give you a perfect crimp every time. Um, I can't afford those, but, well, I can. I just don't want to. Um, I don't want to spend the money on that. I'd rather spend it on other things, like car parts. But I did buy a set of decent... Um, mechanical like hand crimpers which will hopefully help um, this is the printed circuit board for the keyboard I just need to go ahead and assemble that and the other thing I, I did is I've been working on this machine for about two years three years quite a long time um, before people who have been waiting for updates can tell me but over that time, this is the, the 3D printer I built um, before I started making this machine. So this is the, 
the only 3D printer I've ever used. I've I've not really played with with any others apart from a little tiny bit when I was up at the workshop. Um, and even then I didn't use them much up there. I actually made more use of the laser cutters, um, which is another thing I've I've actually ordered is one of those desktop laser cutter kits. So I'll, it'll be interesting to see how well that works, but I'm going off topic here a bit, sorry. Um, so the, the 3D printer works reasonably well. So all of these parts and hundreds and hundreds more have all been printed on this, this homemade printer. But I noticed that over the years, the performance of it has been going down and it's been happening so slowly. I wasn't really noticing the, the quality was dropping. Um, I have got over here, this is just one of many boxes of reject parts. Uh, you can see the quality on that is not good. Uh, the, the, the printing quality was just really poor. And so I sat down and had a look at the printer and tried to figure out why. One, the original hot end, I think I just basically wore it out. Um, in the end, the, the cartridge broke. Uh, that's why this one doesn't have the, the heater cartridge in it. So luckily I had replacement ones. I had a few more like this. I have two of these. So I put one of those on there. And when I mounted it on here, one thing I was never happy about was the mounting. So this was the mounting that I had on there for my original hot end. And you can see there's this kind of slot in the top there. And the way this was supposed to work was this would fit into that slot. It's a bit of a tight fit. And then there's a little keeper piece that was meant to clamp it all in place. And when I first made it, it worked okay, but over time it just got more and more loose. And this would end up wobbling, only very slightly, but enough to, to upset things. So I had to fit the, the new hot end, the new one of these, which is actually shorter than the the old one, so I had to remake this mount anyway. The way I've mounted it now is I machined up this block, and this is a clamping block, and this holds it extremely firmly. Um, one of the reasons I was able to do that is because recently, uh, towards the end of last year, I bought myself a mill. So having the mill lets you, you do things like this really nicely. I mean, you could make all this by hand, but having a mill just makes it so much easier. Um, I had to go a little bit overboard in the slots here because I actually need more downwards travel than upwards travel, but that's okay. Um, so this now is far more rigid, which is good. The other thing I've changed is the cooling fan. So originally I used one of these fans and I had a 3D printed sort of duct. Originally this had a ring on it um, but I found that would sometimes drop off and ruin the prints so I just cobbled together this thing with some little bits of brass strip and some capped on tape and that worked okay but then this would fall off and break out of the fan. So I came up with a, a better solution and what I ended up doing is I ended up using this flexible gooseneck thing because that allows me to position this nozzle exactly where I want it. So that can be positioned to, to direct the cooling air right where you need it. And it was really quick and easy just to, to 3D print the nozzle and the little adapter here that fits into the, into the cooling fan. Um, now this thing, this flexible gooseneck, came off a disposable lighter. Um, I don't think I have one of them around. I, it's the sort of thing you buy from the, the $2 shop. They're, they're ridiculously cheap. And it's one of those sort of handheld lighters with the, with the long flexible shaft. Um, this one never worked. It, it always leaked. So I pulled it apart and then realized, oh, I can just reuse that. And that works really well. The other thing I've done which has really improved the, the quality of the printing again, is I had originally when I built the printer, the, the um, drive for the extruder was here at the back, and I'm using the cable to feed the filament down. 
when I was playing with printing wax-based filament to do some, some lost cast, uh, lost wax aluminium casting, I moved that, that motor onto here. And that put a ton more weight on this whole mechanism which has to move. And it fed the filament a lot better, but it just didn't work as well. So I've gone back to using the, the Bowden cable or the Bowden tube type system here, um, which works really well. This little thing on the top here is a is just a little oiler I made. It's a piece of glass tube from a, a glass cartridge fuse. Um, I just put a few drops of vegetable oil in that every so often and it just helps lubricate the the tube and because I'm using PLA that's vegetable based anyway so they work well together. The other small modification I did is I 3D printed a new um, reel holder that's on skateboard bearings. So this works really well. Um, this is one thing I've noticed with older PLA filament. I'm not sure if it's the sun that does this or mechanical stress but if you leave it sitting for a while it gets very brittle. So that just snaps and the machine will be sitting there and all of a sudden you'll hear it go ping and it's because the the filament has snapped so normally it's quite bendy but you can see this this little piece on the end here actually went hard see that's not that's not breaking oh there it goes so i guess it's just variations in the filament but this is a piece that I, I printed. This is one of the ratchet wheels. I've had to redesign the rotors um, to work with a circuit board as well. So these are the little pins that I'm using. Let's see, where will it focus? The little pogo pins. So to make assembling the rotor easier, this is one of the rotors. You've got the flat contacts on this side, and the pogo pins will be poking out the back there. So I'm reprinting that rotor um, so that there's room for the pins in here. You can see this is a, a thumb wheel that I've printed, and you can see the holes are much bigger. So the way this will work now is there'll be a printed circuit board that fits in here that these pins will be soldered to. So if you imagine the the pins all poke through that way around. They'll be soldered to a printer circuit board which will hold all of these solid. Um, we can see this on the model. If I, um, it's a bit hard to see because I can't rotate it with one hand. Um, just in here, you can see in the, in the bottom there there is the ah. oh. I'll just put the camera down just for a second. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, so you can see in here is the PCB. So I've had to print a spacer. That's this piece here which is this piece, so the printer circuit board will sit in there, the spacer will go on, and then the ring goes on like that. So, to be able to assemble this whole thing, I've just dropped half of it, the, man, this is hard to do, I take this apart. Oh, I can show you on this one. So the way this will work is these are the flat copper rivets that I'm using for the contacts on one side. And these will all get poked through this cover. Um, this was one of the crappy prints, so it's not very good. I think maybe this one is a bit better. This one definitely works. So get it out. So the way this will work is you'll assemble all the rivets through here, like this, and they'll have wires, very thin wire, 
soldered to the back of them. And then for the rotor to work, each of the wires that comes off these 26 contacts will have to go to one of the pins. And that's how the rotor does the, the cross wiring. So this is all built so it can be assembled without the ring in place. So you'll be able to hold this here, cross wire it all, squish all the wires inside there, and then this basically fits over it like that. And then this piece will fit over the top. And when it all gets pressed flush, um, these contacts end up sitting flush. Now, this only assembles one way round because there are three mounting holes and, of course, 26 holes around the outside. So this actually only fits in one position. But this has been printed so that the thickness of it exactly matches the height of these contacts. So once that's all in place, it'll be something like that. This all sits flush. Get rid of the ring. Like that. That all has to fit down. And then that gives you a nice smooth surface. Obviously the ring will go in place. That holds the ring captive but still lets it rotate. And I've lost my little pogo pin. Um, there it is there. And then if you imagine you've got the next rotor and you've got all the little pins, we'll be able to rotate around and rub across those to make contact. That's the idea anyway. I don't know how reliable that's going to be. We'll, we'll see. But I've ordered the PCBs that fit in here and this is why I'm reprinting the rotor parts because I'm going to make one first to check that it all works and um, if one works then I'll, I'll build the rest. I've also done a similar thing for the reflector. Now this is a good example of the printing, the quality of the printing going down. So this is one I printed before I fixed the machine and you can see the ringing on it around the letter there. The focus is. So I recently reprinted that with the machine set up as it is now and the quality is a lot better. Still not perfect. Um, I'm sure a better printer could do a better job but this should be good enough. This reflector will also have a printed circuit board because of course the reflector also has 26 of these pogo pins that stick out. So the reflector just has a circuit board that goes in there, and then there's a cover that, that fits on the top. And that's pretty much how, how that should all work. The, this is one of the lamps. These are um, little panel lamps for um, instrument panels, basically industrial instrument panels. That was the cheapest way of buying bulbs I could find. You'd, you'd think light bulbs would be, small light bulbs like this would be cheap. But, no, they're not. So, that's how they fit. They're, they just sort of slot in place uh, into the little holders there. Um, those were the cheapest bulbs and holders I could find anywhere. And I think they came from Element 14 or, or RS, one of those suppliers. Um, so yeah, the printer's working really well again. Uh, the new extruder is working really well, everything's a lot more solid. One side effect of, of redoing all this is I've found the adhesion to the glass is now so much better. Um, to the point where I, I barely need any glue stick and I'm actually having problems getting things unstuck. So, I don't know why that is. Maybe because this is way more rigid, I'm getting a much, much more consistent first layer. And it just really sticks to the glass. Um, yeah, it's an interesting side effect. So I'm going to go ahead and keep printing these. The printed circuit boards are ordered. They should be here soon. And I should be able to start assembling the keyboard at least. But I won't be able to wire anything up until my fancy new crimpers arrive. But progress is being made, slowly. <laughs>